Let's start off by explaining why this is not just an exercise bike. What is the Carol bike? Because there is something unique there that I want to unpack on this podcast. Yeah, sure. So for, first of all, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, we, we put a lot of love and a lot of effort into it. So it's, it's always great tell. to hear, um, yeah. you know, such nice and positive feedback. So thank you very much. I'm very pleased to hear that. So the Carol bike is... Um, it is an exercise bike, but it is the smartest and most effective exercise bike. Dr. Mindy here. Your body is in a, in a war zone. This is different yes. parts of the brain get activated depending upon how stressed you are. When you look at it from that inflammatory. It's interesting. I mean, that has some merit to it for sure. And you can't control everything. Let's see. And what about the uh, a woman who is not pregnant, but she's aiming? Let me start, Ulrich, by just welcoming you to my podcast. I feel like this is my home, so I feel like I've just invited you into my home. So thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me into your home. That's so kind yeah. of you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I also have to tell you, I don't know if you know this about me. I actually, my undergraduate degree is in nutrition and exercise physiology. Mm -hmm. And when I was in my early 20s, I was actually a personal trainer. And so I was obsessed with exercise. I was obsessed with mm -hmm. all pieces of equipment. And when your bike came to my home, I, you have taken the efficiency of exercise to a whole new level. I have never, ever, ever seen a piece of equipment like this. And every time I get on it, I thank you. I, 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 and I, this is months later. So you let's start off by explaining why this is not just an exercise bike. What is the Carol bike? Because there is something unique there that I want to unpack on this podcast. Yeah, sure. So for, first of all, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, we, we put a lot of love and a lot of effort into it. So it's, it's always great tell. to hear, um, yeah. you know, such nice and positive feedback. So thank you very much. I'm very pleased to hear that. So the Carol bike is. Um, it is an exercise bike, but it is the smartest and most effective exercise bike. And it's been scientifically proven to deliver double the health and fitness benefits in 90% less time than regular cardio. Um, and it provides simple, safe, AI personalized workouts that make yeah. that possible for pretty much every age and fitness levels. And what's really special about our bike is that you can do a very, very effective workout in such short period of, periods of times. So yeah. you can do a, a very effective workout in as little as five minutes. And in fact, you really only have to work hard for two 20 second sprints. And that's been proven to have the same benefit as much longer steady state cardio. And so that's what we're about. Okay, so uh, you have to explain that because my over exerciser achiever brain cannot wrap myself. Like when I get on, I look at all the programs you have, like the overachiever part of me wants to do the hardest one. Yeah, a and yeah. I look at the, the shorter ones and I, I'm like, I really would like to tr understand mm -hmm. if that's how that's gonna benefit me. So explain why that works. Yeah, sure. And I, I understand, like, and this is a question we get a lot. And it's also quite natural because um, for exercise in general, um, there's a clear trade-off. Um, you can work longer and you get greater benefit, or you can work at higher intensity and you uh, get greater benefit. And actually the only exception that we know and that the scientists that we work with know is our specific type of workout that's called reduced exertion, high intensity interval training. That's an exception to that rule where more doesn't necessarily deliver more benefit. And in fact, it has been shown to deliver less benefit. So if I, if I just explain that briefly, what the rehead workout on Carol bike does is it simulates an emergency situation. So you um, work out for two 20 second sprints. So you have a, a very short warm up, then a first 20 second sprint where you push to your maximum intensity. And 
the bike um, adjusts the resistance and controls the workout and guides the workout, uh, guides you through the workout so, so that it's easy to perform. But you push to your maximum intensity. And you can only hold like your maximum power for a fraction of a second. And then you drop off over that 20 seconds. You have a short recovery, second 20 second sprint, and then a cool down. And the whole thing can be done in five minutes. Most people would probably take six or seven minutes, but it's very, very short, only two 20 second sprints. And in those 20 second sprints, two times 20 second sprints, your energy demand goes up by a factor of 100 compared to rest. So 100 fold increase in energy demand. And that means you can't use, like your muscles can't use the energy systems you would use in a longer workout. So, um, and instead they have to mobilize what's, what's called muscular glycogen. That is locally, that's a, a, a locally stored form of sugar that you can access very, very rapidly. And in those two 20 second sprints, you mobilize about 25 to 30% of the glycogen in the muscle. Wow. Wow. And th now that's an emergency reserve. Your body doesn't really like to give that up. Um, and if it does so, um, it sends a strong signal to the body that it has to get fitter and stronger. So um, with the glycogen, um, two signaling molecules get released. One is AMPK that is bound to the glycogen and as you take it out of the storage, gets released. Um, and then the second one is um, a, a molecule called PGC1-alpha, which is a master regulator for mitochondrial biogenesis. Um, and that means with those two 20-second sprints, you can trigger an adaptation that you'd otherwise only get from a much longer workout and therefore reap all the benefit in much, much shorter time. And once, once you've tried those workouts, you also know like this is, they, you know, you, you push all out. So it's not, it's not a free lunch. I don't want to <laughs> sell it as, right. as an exercise pill. It's maybe the closest thing to an exercise pill because it is really, really short. The last yeah. few seconds of the sprint hurt, but they're so short that you can actually do it and it becomes very attainable and achievable um, and you can do it in very, very short time. So let's stick on this glycogen thing mm -hmm. because this is really, really interesting because we talk so much about glycogen in the fasting world and uh, it, I, we call it stored sugar mm -hmm. and my community, we, we're always talking about it because one of the things that I've noticed is that when people come to fasting and it's mostly with the women that when they come to fasting, they struggle to metabolically switch. They can't get mm -hmm. from that sugar burner to that fat burner place because they have too much stored sugar. And so my technique has been to date is you got to fast longer, keep fasting, mm -hmm. keep fasting. And you'll start to go after the muscle glycogen and the, the liver glycogen. So I had never thought until you just said this, that this actually could be a tool for fasters mm -hmm. to start to move through that stored sugar so that their fasting benefits can be, they can get there quicker. But my question to you is if you're on the bike, you're primarily working your, 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 gl your glutes, your, your quads, your hamstrings. So I, my brain was thinking that's the glycogen that's being released, but mm -hmm. is it glycogen throughout your whole body? And do you think this would be an incredible tool to help fasters get a better result in their fasted state? So first, yes, because it's um, cycling, the um, glycogen release happens mainly in your thighs, in your glutes, um, and in your calves. So you, those, but those are your biggest muscles. And yeah. therefore, you don't um, only get a localized result, but you get actually a systemic response. So what we measure and what scientists measured in the lab is the improvement in VO2 max. So that's a measure of your mm -hmm. cardiorespiratory fitness and yeah. like the most important health marker. Um, that increases systemically. And it increases very substantially. So you can, on average, the, the increase is about 12% in eight weeks. Um, 
from doing this exercise focused on the lower body. So very clearly it is like most of it is happening in the legs and in your thighs. And the primary benefit or the first benefit is the improvement in cardiorespiratory fitness measured by VO2 max. And I can go more into how and why that improves, but that's, that's the first thing you notice. The second thing um, you benefit is your metabolic health. Yeah. Um, and that's been also measured and studied. And it's been shown that doing this exercise for eight weeks, three times a week, reduced your risk of developing metabolic diseases, so like type 2 diabetes, by 62% in eight weeks. And um, so there's there's a range of things that, that several markers go into um, into this compound risk score. It's called the met Z score. Um, but blood sugar control is an important contributor to that. And what happens if you so you you ramp up your energy demand so rapidly, and basically you you can't aerobically um, create energy. So you have to run in very quick succession. So there's there's first a little bit of free ATP in the cells. Then uh, the next thing is, is um, phosphocreatine that lasts for something like 10 to 15 seconds. Um, and then that's used and you have to then tap into your glycogen stores. And the body releases um, about 25 to 30% of the locally stored glycogen um, in your thighs and in your glutes. Uh, and it's, it's actually quite surprising because the two 20-second sprints require much less energy than 25. So 25 to 30 percent of your glycogen stored in your largest muscle, muscle groups. That's a lot of energy. That's a mm. lot of calories. But you, mm. you burn only a fraction of that. But because the, the body doesn't know, you, you basically signal to your body, this is an emergency situation. It's like fight or flight. I need loads and loads of energy. And I don't know whether I need it just for 20 seconds or for a sustained period. So mm. the body mobilizes lots mm. of glycogen, mm. even though it doesn't burn through all of it. Um, and the physiological adaptation happens just through the mobilization of the glycogen. Mm. And then because those are your... Um, energy, like emergency energy stores, um, your body also wants to very rapidly replenish those. And that is mm -hmm. regulated by insulin and um, through um, like the, the storage and access of stored energy is regulated by insulin and therefore your insulin sensitivity um, yeah. improves as well. And um, what, what I believe, so I'm, I'm connecting the dots a little bit myself there, but as you improve your, your insulin sensitivity, that certainly fasting or weight management just becomes easier because you can actually access right. the, uh, you, you know, we, we, we have subcutaneous, we have, we have fat stores and we can, mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you're insulin resistant, it becomes really difficult to, to access that. If your insulin sensitivity improves, it, it becomes much easier to access that. So, so I found personally um, weight management with exercise, not, not just the exercise for, for burning calories, but also just to be um, better at, at access, storing and accessing stored energy um, becomes better. And therefore also I found it easier, but I find fasting now relatively easy because I feel I can, like I, I'm carrying a, a, with me actually yeah. a fair amount of energy yeah, yeah. Um, that I can access because I have a little bit of fat. I'm not like whatever, 8% body fat, no, nowhere close. Yeah. Um, so yes, I, I absolutely think that the, this type of exercise supports fasting substantially. Yeah. So the way, the way I look at it is that there's a metabolic switch. It's mm -hmm. like to go from sugar burner to fat burner, you need to be able to make that switch. And yeah. I can tell you from watching so many millions of people fast, is that the the struggle that people have with fasting is that switch is is stuck it's yeah. rusty yeah. and when you like break down why can't people switch over as quickly into fasting it all comes back to hemoglobin a1c mm -hmm. it comes yeah. back to your fasting glucose all the metabolic markers that you are talking about yeah. so what i'm i and literally i didn't think about this until you said this mm -hmm. that what i'm hearing is 
because this bike pushes you to pushes your body to release what you cannot release on your own, that there's a healing, a metabolic healing that mm -hmm. happens that now makes probably more than just fasting easier. It probably makes you actually your food, you, you, it, your integration into of your food mm -hmm. and it makes you probably a better sugar burner. I, I think so. Yes, absolutely. So when we look at that, I still struggle, I'm just going to say, mm -hmm. with five minutes, five minutes sprinting twice. Mm -hmm. what, like if, so I'm just looking at my own personal choices when I come to the bike. I usually pick the 20 minute one mm -hmm. um, because I like to sweat and I like all of that. But what I'm hearing you say is that if you want to be metabolically flexible, if you mm -hmm. want to go after the stored sugar, your best bet is to have these short sprints that force your body into a metabolically healthy place. And you don't get there if you're just riding the bike 20 minutes on a joy ride. Yes. And so I, I must say, we, we started building a bike that literally could just do that because we loved the science so much. Um, and there is um, maybe just as, as background. So we, we've We've, we've not created the science behind that. We've now, we've worked we've, and we are working with the leading universities and researchers in that field. They're doing research on our bikes, but in fact, they did research with, you know, scientific lab equipment before. And, and we just heard about the research, fell in love, and we built a bike that could do that very, very easily for consumers at home. But uh but most people don't want just the bike that they can use for five minutes, three times a week. Um, they want a bike that can do various things. So it has a lot of other workout, uh, structured workouts, or you can use it with third party apps. So you can use it for a lot of things. However, our recommendation is that everybody should be doing two to three times per week, mm. this rehit workout, because it adds something that longer type of cardio just doesn't add. So it's um, with very minimal time, um, gives this extra kick in terms of cardiorespiratory fitness, in terms of metabolic health and metabolic flexibility that, um, yeah, adds something to, to, to your workout routine. And then, yeah, no, we, we see, of course, what our users do. They use it also for longer workouts um, with, with third-party apps, with like, there's, there's a variety of workouts on there. Um, but our primary recommendation is if, if you don't do anything else, do at least that for two to three times per week. Right. And, um, that's, that's a very time efficient and effective yeah. way to, to get those benefits. So it's like your metabolic workout. It's like there's mm. there, we have to look at working out as having different strategies, just like if we're running, there's a different biological change that's happening than compared to when we are lifting weights and they're both beneficial, but they're going after different things. So Absolutely, yeah. with this bike, what you can do is you can do the five minute rehit and that's your metabolic flexibility mm -hmm. or your metabolic primer. And, and it's only five minutes. So it's a, I think what I, we've got to do is recategorize the word working out as having lots of different versions of working mm -hmm. out that will influence your body in different ways. So is that, is that right? Would that be the proper way absolutely, to look at it? Absolutely. In, I mean, in fact, if you, if you look at, and it, this is um, some, it's a sad story really, but uh, it, it's so obvious that exercise is probably the most powerful thing you can do for your yeah. health, uh, maybe next to sleep and, and having, you know, a and reasonable fasting. diet. And yeah? fasting. Exactly. So, you got to put so, fasting in there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love fasting. <laughs> um, but clearly exercise is very important. But then if you look at the figures, how few people actually exercise, right. it's crazy. Um, even, even people who had health problems and where like the doctor prescribes exercise, they still don't do it. And if you survey people, um, the, the number one reason why people say they don't exercise, and that's their own perception, yeah, is lack of time. And, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's what we're trying to address and to overcome and to make that, um, you know, the people have busy lives, distractions or, or want to do different things. That's what we try to address. Um, but we would never advocate to, to, to only do rehit on 
carol bike it's just if you do nothing else then do at least that, do that. Yeah? yeah and i think it's it's part of its unique factor i mean th i think that's the other thing that i that i'm discovering because i can tell you in doing it uh and mm -hmm. doing the rehit and doing it for five minutes i have more muscle definition mm -hmm. i i feel like i mean people keep asking me recently people are like what are you doing i'm like i'm doing nothing i fast And I eat really well, and then I throw some workouts in here and there. But now I realize that maybe it's been the rehit that has allowed the muscle glycogen to be mm. released, showing more muscle definition. Because that's a stretch. That's yeah. I've never done that before. I I'm like put on the running shoes, go for an hour run, mm. um, and then like I said, you know, I gravitate towards the 20 minute workout on the Carol bike. But is is there any other? piece of equipment or is there any other way to get at the like could you do sprints outside like how what so, are the benefits of in comparisons of that so there, there is scientific lab equipment because as i said the the research is not just a few years that's like literally decades in the making but yeah. that's quite expensive so so literally tens like more than ten thousand dollars for for like the bikes yeah that's very unpractical for home use or gym use um, so what we did is basically take, and we've worked there with the leading researchers, um, take what, what they had and put it into a consumer-friendly um, package that makes it very easy and that is fully optimized to perform rehit. And maybe just to explain, so what's really important is like these two 20-second sprints, they only work if you push to your limits. Yeah. and but it has to be your limits, yeah? Not somebody else's right. limits, it has to be your right. limits. It has to be the resistance um, that the bike applies in those two 20-second sprints has to be optimal for you. If it's too high, you're not gonna reach your peak. If it's too low, it's, mm -hmm. you're not gonna reach your peak. Um, so it has to be the right resistance. It has to be applied at the right time. So you, you basically accelerate yeah. at a low resistance to high speed And then the software will apply the right resistance at the perfect time. So you reach your peak power. Um, and then it keeps optimizing it as you get fitter and stronger. Or if you took a break, also if you, if you lost a little bit of your fitness. So it keeps adjusting it to your level. Um, and that makes it very, well, that makes it very simple to perform. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. And you still, two times 20 seconds, you have to work hard, but it makes it simple to perform. Now, it's hard to do the same thing on a normal exercise bike. When we heard about the science, the first thing I did was go to a shop and bought a regular bike and, and just couldn't replicate the experience. And mm. like the, the deficit was big enough for us to basically change what we do and start a company around the bike. Um, I would also not recommend like a treadmill because I, I think it's just uh, it's too jerky movement, not safe enough yeah. for explosive sprints. There, there are two alternatives that you could try. Um, one is if you have in, in your gym an air bike. Um, I don't know whether you've mm. seen those. They're, they're like air bikes. There you you can um, also do intervals on them and and get to relatively high power outputs. It, it's not personalized. It's you know and it may be great for for somebody like me. Forties yeah? goes to the gym quite regularly that might be the right resistance, but it's essentially a bike with one gear, whereas our bike um, has well, has like a thousand gears and we can mm. personalize it to, to everybody and therefore make it suitable for, yeah, literally every age and fitness level. Yeah. Um, and, and the other thing, and this is a valid thing to do, is just a sprint track. So literally if you mm. go outside and you do um, gentle run, uh, no, like very, very gentle jog, And then um, put in two 20 seconds all out sprints and really go hell for leather. Again, it's not for everybody, might be a trip risk and so on. But I think that's possibly also a, a viable alternative. Um, again, we've, we've built a bike that's fully optimized, that personalized, that makes it easy and simple. You, you get like lots of metrics you can track. But if you, if you want to. <laughs> kind of see whether whether a sprint training is for you, that would be something to try first. Do you talk a little bit about the AI part because mm. what I what, that's the other piece that I'm finding like if I go sprint, um, 
out like I, uh, you know, I love to sprint, by the way. Mm -hmm. And when I go to sprint, I it's it's there's the it's the same thing every time. Right. Like the ground isn't adding resistance to me. Whereas if I sprint on your bike, your bike continually pushes me to a next level of fitness because the resistance, it knows mm -hmm. who I am and it knows what I've done and it knows the resistance that I need to get to that next level of, of glycogen release. Talk about what that is. Sure, sure. So but we have, we just have by now the largest database of these types of workouts, rehead workouts. So we've got 20,000 plus users and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of workouts that we can analyze. And therefore we know what a, how the profile of a perfect sprint should look like. So we, um, what, what happens is you reach your peak power after three, four seconds, and you, you can only hold that for a fraction of a second. Otherwise, it's not your peak power. And then you fatigue throughout the sprint. And basically, the rate of fatigue, so how far you're losing, you're, you're fatiguing, and, and your power drops off through the sprint, tells us whether the resistance was too high or too low for you. And mm. so we, we and, and obviously, we know many other things about our users, like all their demographic, like their, their, their age, their, their gender, their weight, their height, um, how often they work out and so on. And so we can, based on this very large data set, um, our algorithm can determine the optimal resistance of the workout for you and can yeah. also adjust that and keep adjusting it as you get fitter and stronger. So to basically keep you on your toes um, all throughout um, so that you don't I mean, look, eventually everybody will reach a plateau. We're not, we're not becoming all Olympians and, and so on. That's, that's not happening. But so that you hit a plateau as late as possible and that you um, basically continue to be challenged. And that's what the, the algorithms and the AI does. So it's kind of like having a personal trainer in the bike. That, that is exactly. That's where our name comes from in a way. It's the, oh. um, yeah, exactly. The, so, so Carol stands for... Um, cardiovascular optimization logic. It's the it's the algorithms um, to to optimize and personalize the workouts for you, and and that's something we we continually develop further. Yeah, we, it's it's a fun thing to develop and to yeah, to bet. improve. And because the the bikes are all connected, um, you know, you you get whenever we, we we keep developing and adding new workouts and and improving the software. So there's there's um, the bike gets better as you, as, as it grows older, so to speak. I mean, I've noticed that because I get on it. I think, why does it mm -hmm. seem so hard today? And I'm like, oh yeah, cause it got smarter. It remembered me from yesterday or from the two days before. Mm -hmm. So I told, I totally feel that. So let's talk about women because one of the, the things I have really been teaching women as they go into perimenopause and menopause mm -hmm. is that we have to change our workouts because if we are working out and bringing cortisol up to an extremely high level, cortisol, too much cortisol actually makes us insulin resistant. And when we're insulin resistant, we cannot balance our estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So I, I was a collegiate athlete. I love to push my body hard, but I found I dramatically needed to shift my workouts when I went into my perimenopausal years. Mm -hmm. And then when I got a Carol bike, I was, my mind was blown because I was like, oh my God, this is a menopausal answer because mm -hmm. we can become metabolically fit. We can do it in less time and we can start to balance our sex hormones in a, in a unique and new way. So do you have any research on what this has done for women's hormones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can talk a little bit about it without being a deep, deep expert. But uh, the first thing to say is if you, um, when you talk about cortisol, um, the workouts are actually, because they are so short, um, while they create a response and the ad adaptation, um, they are so short that the, the overall stress levels for your body are lower than yeah. these extended long cardio sessions. And that's why it's reduced exertion, high intensity interval training yeah. and 
at every head. So that's one. Um, the other, um, if you look at the just the ages, age, the, the typical age ranges of our users, um, our main user demographic is actually, and I don't want to put off anybody who's outside of that, but but is around forty to to sixty five. Oh, but I we're bet. going all the way from oh, like like down to ten if they're old enough to sit on the bike to over eighty. But our main demographic is probably forty to sixty five. We, we we've looked at our own data and looked how women and men use the bike differently. And obviously, I would have loved to have some some fantastic insight because I I know that this is of interest to you and your audience. Yeah. But um, we actually found, and I find that's insightful in itself. So our users are about fifty percent women and fifty percent men, and. Our users, our, our women, our ladies, our women use the bike just as regularly as men. They seem the same improvement in cardiorespiratory fitness and in power as men see. And they also perform as consistently. So I had, um, because I, I know from research and from talking with the, the scientists we work with, I know that obviously men and women are not the same. And, and for example, the monthly cycle plays an important role in like in elite sports in in sports performance and that that um, as, as far as I know that that some elite athletes time their their cycle um, so that they're at a particular I think, I think mid follicular uh, phase for certain competitions um, got it so, you got it that's um, it <laughs> but but here's the thing so that's not what we see um, in our data. So hmm. our women users use the bike as regularly as men, and they perform as consistently as men. So it seems to be something that women can do throughout also their monthly cycle without um, seeing a drop off. So I was surprised to see that. But that that is one thing. So it's it's definitely not just for men. Um, we, we have very many uh, women who, who, who use the, the bike. Um, and then I can tell you one thing. So we, um, th there was one paper published by um, uh, the well, probably the leading lab in this field uh, from McMaster's University in Canada last year, uh, and they found that while men and women benefited to the same degree in terms of fitness improvement, that the ways men and women um, benefited were slightly different. Um, so there's there's different mechanisms how you can get fitter. You can get um, greater cardiac output. You can get greater plasma levels. You can have a greater um, kind of capillary density or greater mitochondrial density. Um, and so there were slight they observed slight differences there. And over the last year, they have actually on our bike uh, done a year long study comparing male female differences to to back that up. But in fact, um, no, they found those differences weren't there and that actually men and women performed and benefited from this exercise in the same way. So in terms of what you get from the bike, um, it, it is, it, it's just the same for men and women. One, one difference we see is the types of workouts women do compared to men. So there is a slight difference. Um, they do the same amount of these rehit rides, which I'm very happy about because that's what we're advocating. But then we have another category, we call them fat burn rides. Um, and those are more high intensity workouts, so no maximum intensity, but high intensity workouts. They, they have shorter sprints and a greater number, I like, like 25, those. 25 minutes. Yeah, exactly. They're and they burn a phenomenal amount of calories. Yes, exactly, because there's a great level of afterburn. And uh, women do substantially more of those than men do, yeah. um, whereas men do more kind of other of the right, like free rides and with, with third party apps and so on. Um, so the motivation seems to be a slightly different. One. I, I don't know what I should think about that, whether <laughs> whether there's some, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, whether, whether women just care more about it or, or some societal pressure. But so that we see that that women, I think this aspect of calorie burning on top of the um 
the respiratory fitness, cardiorespiratory fitness and metabolic health uh, seems to play a greater role for women. Yeah. So, you know, it's so interesting. I have so many thoughts about this. And, and this is what I think about when I'm on the bike. <laughs> I'm <laughs> like, okay, when I look at all the programs you have, my brain goes to the cycling woman, not yeah. not the bicycling woman, but the, the woman who has a menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. That I it, What's interesting is when estrogen is coming in, we actually should be pushing ourselves cardiovascularly more than ever. Our workouts should mm -hmm. be harder. That's like day one to day 10. We mm -hmm. should be really pushing our, our workouts. Then in ovulation, we actually have the most amount of testosterone. So we should be doing a lot more like resistance training. So could mm -hmm. we, could it, this is what I want to come up with is like some kind of more resistance. You would go into the bike and you would say what day of the cycle you were on. And the bike would know that, yeah. hey, you have more testosterone right now. So I'm going to push your muscles more because I can build your muscles more. And mm -hmm. then the week before our period, about day 20, when we need more progesterone, we need to be a little bit smoother. It might be more of a joy ride. Could could mm -hmm. we come up with an AI version of a to match a woman's cycle? So yes, and um, so we're, we're obviously we're thinking about that. And we Cara bikes never going to be a finished product because we we're curious and excited about adding new things. And this is the beauty, you know, same as with the Tesla that you that you get the the software. You can update the software over the air. And um, whenever we find something new or like our scientific partners find something new, we, we can add it to the bike. Um, so clearly there's something we'd love to do. And um, we, we will add more functionality also to create um, kind of custom programs. So that we, um, that, that for example, you know, people like you could share with, with their audience or with, with other followers. So ah. I, I'd, yeah, absolutely love to build that in. I, I don't think we'll have it in the next six weeks. But over the next... <laughs> You're so sweet. I wasn't thinking six weeks, but thanks for thinking weeks. I love that. Um, no, because obviously, no, we, 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 we push out new updates every, every two months. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wow. much. Um, and, and if there's new science, then obviously we want to include that and um, involve that. And the, the level of choice we give to our users also increases more and more. So absolutely. Now... Previously, we've we've shied back from asking people about their menstrual cycle, um, yeah. and we, we have to do that sensitively. But but yes. if somebody wants to, yeah, I see no reason why not, and why one couldn't um, build something around that. Yeah, and and then the for the postmenopausal woman, the the short rehits, mm -hmm. um, doing that three times a week is brilliant because the postmenopausal woman who doesn't have a cycle anymore, she has to still mind two major hormones. So when you're doing the rehit, what you're doing is you're really priming your estrogen system. Mm -hmm. But then I, I would say the, the free ride, the, I mm -hmm. do it again for 20 minutes at whatever pace I choose, would be more where you were minding progesterone. So one piece of equipment and now I can teach menopausal women how to pull two different or work on building two different hormones through this one piece of equipment. And then having said that, one of the biggest challenges I was thinking as to why would women go more towards fat, the fat burning programs. And it's, you know, for women over 40, as estrogen goes down, they become more insulin resistant. Mm. And so then what happens is they're gaining weight for no particular reason. So they're gravitate towards the fat burning workouts because they're trying to lose weight. But I, what I'm going to now educate my community on is that you actually may burn more fat mm. in the rehits. Yeah. Do you feel like, like, can we, I know you call it the fat burning stage state, but the rehit is also a fat burning state. Absolutely. And for metabolic flexibility, yes, it's, and because it's also so short. So it's for, for in our recommendation that we give to our riders, it's the foundation, basically. Um, if you do nothing else, do that. If you, if you have more time, then obviously build in also some longer workouts. Yeah. Um, the, 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 there's quite a few people out there advocating for they term zone two and zone five um, uh, exercise. So spending um, 
both time in a you know like like lower intensity band for longer periods and then spending a little bit of time in these very high intensity bands um and so so that's absolutely what you can do with the bike and which we okay. think is is very sensible to do it's mm -hmm. just if you yeah basic thing is if you if you don't do anything do at least that yeah. and then obviously add to it if you can and and not not just um in terms of cardio but also you know resistance training for example very important part i would say of of any balanced workout routine um lifting some heavy weights for men for women of, of any age actually is is a very good thing yeah talk a little bit about uh the difference between this and a peloton because I know a lot of people like the Peloton was really like the go-to during COVID. Mm -hmm. It was like the go-to, yeah, the sure. go-to workout. Um, but can you explain a little bit for our audience, like why, w where do these two differ? Because mm -hmm. that's the other thing I've learned is they, they vastly differ. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But sadly, um, because it's a bike and it has a screen, it's like people ask, oh, so it's like a Peloton. It's like, no, it couldn't be further away from a Peloton. Right. So uh, Peloton is all about, um, you know, celebrity instructors, great soundtracks, a bit of like virtual community. Um, and and I don't want to talk them down, but they do. They've done very well. And, and I wish them well. Um, we are all about scientifically validated, maximally efficient and effective workouts um, driven by machine intelligence and um, the bike is fully automated and helps you perform that exercise optimally. Mm -hmm. um, now, as it happens, you can actually use, you can do Peloton workouts on our bike. So you, the, um, while, while many other bikes are quite restrictive in what you can do with them, um, we're, we're quite open. So you can have um, the Peloton digital app on it. Um, and you can have actually like any third party cycling apps app on it. There's, there's a range of others like Swift, um, Kino map, Ruby. There's, there's a whole range of apps that you can use with our bike. Um, we use kind of common industry standards. So it, it gives a great deal of choice, um, mm. to do a variety because most households don't have two bikes at home and most households don't just have one user and, and just because you know, some, somebody wants to do this type of workout doesn't mean that others wouldn't do, wouldn't want to do other workouts occasionally. Um, right. so, so we, we give a lot more versatility, I would say, um, than, than the other systems that are kind of very much just locked up and you can do, you can do only that type of ride, um, on them. Yeah. Do you think part of the secret sauce too is, is the time efficiency because people I know who have a Carol bike, say that the the number one thing they love about it is how little time it takes. Yeah. Do you do you feel like that's part of the secret sauce too? So the results and the 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 time efficiency. So you you it's very noticeable results. So in 8 weeks you can you can gain or on average our users and in many scientific studies by now uh 12% increase in VO2 max and it, that's such a fundamental mm, health marker and uh, like physiological trait about you it's it's not subtle that's very um obvious it's very noticeable so the the result is very clear and then yes that you can get it in so little time and yeah. you know many people even um even the like many of our users enjoy exercise and they they like to do they like to play sports or they like to do yoga or um they like to do lifting uh, i i've started <laughs> Um, so I spend a lot of time lifting now, um, because I can do that with my teenage sons. And that's, yeah. um, that's something we, we, we like to do together. Um, but, but I still have, um, with, with the Carol bike, I get my cardio done very, very efficiently and very quickly and don't have to compromise. So I can maintain, yeah, fairly comprehensive workout routine, I'd say, um, yeah. and have like cover all my bases. What, what do we know about the research on muscle building? You, you just brought this up in my mm. head because, you know, muscle, I really agree with the statement that muscle is the organ of longevity. 
And I can tell you as a menopausal woman that it's very important. I have to fight for muscle more than ever before um, as my hormones have shifted. So do we have any statistics on you know, growth of, of certain muscles mm -hmm. when you are continuously using the Carol bike? So we, we do actually, yes. And so this is not something we um, advertise as the, the primary benefit. So we, we talk about cardiorespiratory fitness and we talk about metabolic health a lot. Um, but in fact, the, the forces, um, when you do these maximum intensity sprints, are also relevant for building... Um, muscle. And so we see in our users that their peak power, and so, so that's force peak power, um, goes also up by some 13, 14% over, over like an eight week period. So very clearly for your lower body, um, the, the stimulus you create from doing rehab rides um, is relevant for, for muscle building. And we're, we're actually waiting there so we're doing a, a study with Western University Colorado to, to look at the strength benefit from rehit. And that would be then measured by one rep max uh, for, mm -hmm. for a squat, for example. And so the early data also conf seem to confirm that. We're waiting for the, the final data. And so, yes, for the lower limbs, it, it is an exercise that's relevant for muscle, but you're, you're obviously you want to do some push-ups and pull-ups and things for your right. upper body on top of that. I could totally see that. I mean, I could see that. And I, and I actually feel like, so I like to do, when I lift weights, I like to do upper body weight work. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, 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 I sort of skip the lower body work. Yeah. I don't know why. And that's the most, well, no, I, I can tell you why it's the most brutal part. If you, if you do, <laughs> yes. Weight, weighted squats is like leg day. No, I mean I, I don't know how much your your audience and listeners are are, are into into lifting, but but the dread, dreaded leg day is is usually the the hardest part, and um, so that I usually skip a little bit then for when I'm when we're when we're doing weights and I focus on upper body because I can and because I know I get a lot of benefits from the sprint, uh, from the rehead right. sprints also for the lower, for, for my legs. So I've got that covered already. And then, you know, <laughs> can work right. on my bench press. Right. So that's what I was mm. going to say. What I've noticed is that my, my quads and my mm. glutes are getting stronger yeah, and yeah, yet yeah. I'm not doing the lower weight workout. Yeah, and I just yeah. all of a sudden realized it's probably from the bike. And, and that would be, so that's reflected in our user data that's reflected in that preliminary data I saw from Western University, Colorado, and there should be later in this, this year, um, a paper out on the strength benefits of rehit. So yes. I, I expect very much that that is true. And so yes. that, um, you know, you, you, you can, unless you really enjoy it, um, focus more on your upper body rather than, um, than, than doing leg day. So you could do three days of rehit a mm. week, and then maybe two days of upper body. Yeah, and okay. then, you know, I, I think everybody should throw a yoga day in there. Maybe yeah, throw exactly, a yoga exactly. day Like some in. mobility and stability training. Yes, yeah. that's that's exactly how we think about it. That you 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 do some something for your cardio respiratory fitness, some something for, for strength and something for mobility. And so so what you suggested there is very reasonable and can be done actually with, with very little time if you if you're you know smart about it. Right. So then it's, it's so then the the rehit workouts are building muscle and they're they're helping you get more insulin sensitive. Mm -hmm. And so they're really a, accomplishing two goals yeah. where I like to go run. And I'm thinking when I go run, those two mm -hmm. goals aren't necessary. Like if you look at the difference between like a marathoner's body and like a weightlifter's body, they're massively different. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that I found mm -hmm with my love for running is it breaks muscle down. Mm, and yeah. I, at 53, I don't want to break muscle down. Yeah, so yeah. it does sound to me like you actually are killing two birds with one stone. That's, that's what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and I mean, I, again, I hadn't really thought that all the way mm -hmm. through. 
Um, the other thing I do want to talk about with the bike that I haven't decided what I think of yet mm -hmm. is the noises that you have on there. Like you can have a tiger chase you and I kind of like it. It's kind of funny. Yeah. So like I get motivated by a tiger chasing me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so t just so everybody kind of understands, you have some very interesting soundtracks that are mm -hmm. actually really motivating. Yeah. And so I guess this is um, as, as you're new to it. Um, we 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 thought that's like an easy way to explain the concept to to have somebody yeah. talk you through it and and kind of put you into this. Um, so so we we've got a um, a very nice voice, um, the same woman that voices the onboard uh, announcement on on British Airways. Um, oh, wow. So you have you have that just a very beautiful British voice talking you through. Um, yes the how you're in the savannah and in prehistoric yes. times and then kind of there's a tiger behind you and then you have to go all out and the music gets all crescendo um yeah. yes it's a playful take on on just trying to get the idea across that what we want to simulate is this emergency situation and fight or flight uh response and that that just triggers you know a different biological response than uh, a regular workout we we do have normal music soundtracks as well, and some people also do it without soundtracks. Or you can watch, you know, the, the it's a choice, but it's 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 a playful take on on the idea of what the workout is. Well, so so as somebody who writes books and creates things in the world, I actually think it's brilliant beyond the fact that you have to run from the tiger when she tells mm -hmm. you to run from the tiger because here's the difference and i'm curious so you you, you should do some research on this if i'm staring at like a, a peloton and there's a picture of somebody leading me somewhere or you know the peloton can have things where you go through different parts of mm -hmm. of the world there's no imagination in that it's actually the way that your brain is working in that moment is not to your benefit. When mm -hmm. I'm auto listening to her take me through the savanna, I don't have a picture. So my, the neurons in my brain mm -hmm. actually have to create a picture. So you just actually made me think I'm also developing mm -hmm. new neurons because I have to use my imagination. Mm -hmm. I'm not numbing out to a picture that has taken the imagination out of out of it. I have to think of what the savanna is. I have to think of what the what the tiger is. It's it's part of the process. Nice. Have, yeah. You have to do some research on like neuronal growth that that creates. Mm. I've been we we have um, be, because so we're recording this in May, um, and it's Mental Health Awareness Day. We we have done um, not not original research, but. Um, uh, so like literature research with, with our partners. And we're, we're actually, we're looking probably at doing a, a, a small study in that. So what, what, what has been shown or is known uh, is that, that exercise and especially high intensity exercise um, increases your BDNF levels. So brain derived nootropic factor, yes. which um, uh, affords a level of neuroprotection and neuroplasticity. And so it's uh, clear that exercise is very good for the brain in that regard. Um, and that high intensity exercise is even better. So there was just a very recent study uh, from a university in New Zealand that found that um, sprint training releases four to five times more BDNF mm -hmm. than um, like long steady state exercise. Yeah. So sprint training has all sorts of marvelous and wonderful benefits. And yes, it's not just, it's, it's not just your heart and your muscles and your metabolic health. No, it's, it's definitely also very healthy for your, for your brain um, through, through this BDNF release. It's good for uh, mental health. Uh, it's, it's been shown to, to be as effective or more effective um, in treating anxiety and depression um, than, than, than medication is. So it's, uh, there's, man, I, I, there, there's so many good things about exercise. I know. It's, it's, it's really, uh, th this is one of the, you know, we can argue about loads and loads of things, um, but with exercise, it is really black and white that exercise yeah. is so fundamentally positive and good for you. And then, these high intensity exercises 
are especially beneficial. So it's um, yeah, it's, it's a very good thing if uh, to to pick up. It's a great habit to to build. Yeah, and I'll tell you one way. I am so happy you bring up the BDNF piece because mm -hmm. one way that I've been using the Carol bike is if I have a busy day, and I can tell you as a 53-year-old woman, as you lose your hormones, um, depression and anxiety become frequent visitors. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've been really working on different ways to naturally handle those moments when I, my spirits feel a little low. And what I have found is the most effective thing is to pop on the Carol bike mm -hmm. for five, 10 minutes. And all of a sudden my mood is shifted and I'm back mm -hmm. in, the, the, in the game of my work day. Yeah, and sometimes awesome. I'll actually hop on a couple of times a day just because it's five minutes or 10 uh -huh. minutes yeah. because I'm like, okay, this, yes. is, this is like my, my exercise mm -hmm. Prozac is that mm -hmm. I can use it in short spurts exercise. to change my mood. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So I, um, I also find it's, it's just such a healthy habit. And so, so I generally do it first thing in the morning, just like literally I get out of bed. I do my five minutes on, on Carol and um, it's like, the first win um, already banked for the, uh, like, like yeah, it's the first win of the day. Um, and I like that. Yeah. And it, it's because it does so many things for my health. And um, yes, it, it, it helps for, for mood and for your mental health as well. The, the other thing, do you do the, the breathing and trying to follow um, <sighs> the, because that's, that's, I find yeah. is a very nice little, um, you know, making really most of the time. So um, if you do the 220 second, the rehab thing, you, you do have a little bit of warm up, a little bit of recovery, a little bit of cool down. So sometimes people ask us, what's the point of that? Can't I do just the 220 seconds? And no, there is actually a point to, to all three phases. But what you can do, and the bike guides you through that, you can do mindful breathing yeah. in that time. And it's, it's actually quite challenging, yeah, to, to yes, kind of is. in for four and then out for six. Um, but that's also a very effective way to to basically balance your, your nervous system and 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 get in a calm state again. And so here's something. Um, the heart rate recovery for, for when you do exercise, heart rate recovery is an important marker of your fitness. I find if I very mindfully and consciously breathe and um, try to control my breathing, my heart rate recovers much faster and comes. Um, so, so obviously it peaks like, really to a high level in the sprints. But then when I, when I focus on my breath, it recovers much faster and yeah. it, it has this, you know, balancing effect. So, and again, I don't know if you've done research on that because what you're actually doing is you're priming the parasympathetic nervous Absolutely. system. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when we look at like what exercise does and when you're trying to do it really hard over a, a significant mm -hmm. period of time, you're locking yourself in the sympathetic nervous system. Absolutely. Yeah. And so again, I, my, you know, my, uh, my passion is helping menopausal women understand mm -hmm. how to keep their health at the highest level possible. And what I find is that most menopausal women have a very weak parasympathetic nervous system. So you, thank you for reminding me of that because I think that's another secret of this incredible bike mm -hmm. is that it is a tool to prime that system if you follow the breathing instructions. Have, mm -hmm. you, have you done any research on like HRV or anything that would tell us if the, that our parasympathetic nervous system is getting, getting stronger? We, we have not done original primary research, but we've looked at the research. And, and it's very clear that um, Andrew Huberman's lab in, in California, they've published recently a paper where they've um, compared um, different types of breathing versus meditation and the effect on um, you know, various metrics um, measuring your, your mental uh, state and, and your calmness and so on. And they found that breathing is um, uh, amongst the things they've looked at the most powerful way to, to balance your nervous system. And, and they found that um, the most effective style of breathing was the, um, so they, they have the, they called it 
I don't know what they call it, the double tap or so, but basically where you have a shorter inhale um, and then a long drawn out exhale. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. that's exactly what we have on the bike that um, we, for, and it, it adjusts a bit with your heart rate so to, to make it manageable, um, but that you inhale for four and then exhale for six. And that is really, it's a parasympathetic nervous system balancer to get you because the sprints, obviously, yes, they, they activate the sympathetic nervous system to, to get you to rebalance that as quickly as possible and, and bring a sense of calm back. Um, and yes, it's so it's brilliant. It's brilliant. What mm -hmm. you created is brilliant. So thank you I so just, much. Yeah, I just thank you. I've never, ever seen a piece of equipment like this. So I really appreciate it. And I love that you're continuing to yeah. update it. And I, I can't wait to do some yeah, hormonal exactly, work with exactly, you guys. Exactly, exactly. It's a journey. That's, a, yeah, exactly. The hormone impact on that is is another thing. We're, we're very, so we, we, we're we looking into that and we want to understand it more. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's, of course, work in progress. And we, 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 we don't want it to ever finish because also the science moves Yes. On a new thing, we we learn new things, and then we want to apply it and make it available. Like, tell it to our users, tell it to um, and and make it available for them. So it's a fun thing to do, actually. Absolutely. So let me end on this. This has nothing to do with the bike, uh, but this what I do at the end of every podcast is I love to talk about two things. And this year, our theme on this podcast is self love, and so. Do you have a self-love practice outside of the bike? Because the bike is self-love. Um, do you have a way you give to yourself every day, take care of yourself every day? And the second question is, what is your superpower? If you have like one superpower you bring to the world, what do you think it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, my, my superpower, I don't know whether it's a superpower, but I think... I'm, well, I'm an engineer. I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm good at at um, at problem solving and um, kind of turning turning a fascinating little project, uh, problems and challenges into into practical solutions, um, like like our bike. So that that is certainly one thing. Um, whether it's a superpower, I don't know, but that's that's what I dedicate myself to, and I I, I love what I do, and I, you know, if I if I look back at my teenage self, um, th this is actually exactly what I would have wanted to do. I got there with many detours, but um, I, I think that there 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 was a calling, um, and the self love. I think I mentioned that earlier. I'm very much into weight training and and being with my with my teenage sons in the gym, so. Um, that's that's just very very high quality time that that yeah. I gain a lot from them uh, with them, and and that I uh, enjoy very much. I would think that is a treat and and oh, a bit yeah. of self love. Oh, anytime you're you're working on your own fitness level, that is self love, and anytime you're hanging out with people you love, mm. that is self love. So I I a thousand percent agree. So. Thank you, Ulrich. I, I I really I think of you every time I get on the bike. Thank I've you. been dying for this conversation because there's something unique here that I've never seen in exercise. And I just can't wait to share this with the world. So so super appreciate you. And I can't wait to talk hormones with you and how we integrate yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let's do that. Let's do that. Well, thank you so much. It was a real pleasure um, being on your podcast, being on your show, having this great conversation with you. Thank, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure.